We're talking about text editors and a bit about IDEs. So, in general, when you're looking to talk, like, at what text editor you want to use, like, you have to start with just a few questions, like, that you're asking. So, first, what OS are you running and what type of stuff do you want to program? How much effort are you willing to put into actually getting used to and learning the editor? What type of development are you doing? And then just general, what are you looking for in it? So, so specific things here, so like obvious, if you're doing OS X or iOS, you're going to use Xcode. You don't really have another option there. If you're doing the Android development, you tend to do it in something that uh, Google actually provides you, Android Studio. So Android Studio is uh, based off of IntelliJ. And it is a lot better than what they used to have before. I'm forgetting the name of it. But whatever they had before was just not as convenient. And then there's also a Xamarin, which is a more new system. It's also, to, for the non-free version, is pretty expensive, but allows cross-platform development between Android and iOS. And that is all written in C Sharp, I believe. And then in general, if you're using any of Microsoft languages, you're going to want to use Visual Studio. And then if you don't happen to be on a Windows system, then you can use Model Develop for C Sharp. Then C Sharp is pretty much the most popular of the Microsoft based languages. So, a little bit about IDEs. I personally don't really use them too much, so I can't speak all too much about them. But in general, if you're working on a very large project and have like a large code base, they are incredibly convenient as compared to using a, another, like a simple text editor, even if it has project extensions with it. Just because build features as well as stuff like refactoring just become so much more convenient in an IDE. So say you're writing a huge project and then you decide that, oh, this variable name is kind of inconvenient. So you can then use the IDE features for refactoring with the new name and everything is fixed automatically as opposed to going through a text editor and just changing it every single time, which is if you're working on the project is pretty much just a waste of time. So these four IDEs are probably the most commonly used that I know. So most of them are pretty much all uh, Eclipse, IntelliJ, and NetBeans are all based in Java or C++. And Visual Studio is set with C++ and the other Microsoft languages. But they all pretty much have plugins for to work with any other language. So they're pretty universal in terms of that. And so now with actual generic text editors, so I'll talk about our Sublime, Atom, Vim, and Emacs. So first with Sublime, it's probably one of the first ones that people end up going to if they want a code editor. So it's pretty simple, but it has a ton of features with it. So of syntax highlighting and a lot of other things. It's also extensible through Python. So if it doesn't have something you want, you can easily write something up and then add it via the Sublime Text API. And then two some I guess you could call them somewhat unfortunate things with Sublime Text is that there is a quote unquote paywall and that it, it's unregistered and that every like 20 times you save, then it'll, let's do this, I can't type, or save, so every few times you save, it'll ask you to, like, thank you for trying out some line, unregistered, would you like to purchase a license? But it doesn't get in the way of any except every time, like every 20 times you say. Then it is also a closed source system. So if you 
want to make any substantial extensions, then you really can't, except through the API. And so next there is Atom, which is very similar to Sublime and the appearance. So as you can see this Sublime and Atom, you could have uh, wrong ones. Atom very sublime here. But this one is based off of Chromium and developed by GitHub. So it's fully open source. So it's intended to be like a hackable text editor. So pretty much all of it, it you can work with through, since through Node.js. And that's very clear through Visual Studio Code, which is Microsoft's open, I believe it's open source version of Visual Studio that is also cross-platform. So it, this is there is Visual Studio Code here. I don't really have any example of it here, but it is like basically Visual Studio on any platform that you want, but it isn't as fully featured as, say, Microsoft's Visual Studio. So and the last two that I'll talk about are Vim and Emacs. So these two are different in that they have modal editing. So what that means with Vim is, oh, I will, oh yeah, there, there we go. So here, if I type, I don't get it, so you have to go into insert mode and type something. So function or whatever. And then you leave it, and then you can just type commands from there. And then it is very lightweight. And it's pretty much universal. So a very convenient thing about Vim, if you learn it, is that Vim and or VI, which is the editor that Vim is based on, it is pretty much on any Unix machine. And it's also usable in the terminal. So say you have a like some server somewhere and you need to edit config files or just edit anything on it, then Knowing them will make that a lot easier because you can just find the files and then add it. So I this should work fine. So this is say the server on VisualOcean. So now I can just edit files on here however I want. And this is automatically installed on pretty much any system and it allows you to then effectively edit files on pretty much any system you come across. That, well, that's new space, so not Windows, basically. And so you can also use the key binding should be pretty much anywhere else. So Sublime has an extension for it, Eclipse does, Emacs does, and that's very useful because even though you can extend Vim quite a bit, Vim script, which is the extension language, is not very user friendly. So that's actually why there's a project right now called NeoVim coming out, which is kind of development and it's pretty much rewriting the Vim code base to then clean all that up and then all the scripting will then be in Lua which is a much nicer language to work with. So, show them for the... Here is like an example of Vim commands. So the idea of them is that it is very, like quick keystrokes and mnemonics to remember them. So like deleting a line in DP, changing the word to CW, and things like that. Now, for Emacs, it is also modal editing, but, and then the key bindings are all based on chords. So, here's a reference card that you probably can't read, just its size, but it's, by chords, it's pretty much, they say control C, control C, control X, control whatever it has to type them, as opposed to quick key bindings, or, like, 
short E bindings, I guess. And so Emacs itself is kind of extendable in Emacs list, which, although it's a much different language than people are probably used to, given that it's a list, it's also a very convenient way to extend it. And a lot of the reason people would use Emacs is that it actually does interface incredibly nicely with list development. So here's Emacs here and then I or let me use the one that actually has slides. Okay, I screwed up my content file in the process of this, so I can't really push it off long, but it's just very quickly and a very efficient uh, list development. Like it basically Emacs works as the de facto list IDE. And so in general, when you're looking at the like text editor, like you have the idea of like the new field, so like atom sublime, they feel very refined and also like sort of they like I can't think of another way to put it than just feel a lot newer than say memory emacs. And they are also a lot easier to get into. So you have to think like if you want to learn like memory emacs as opposed to those, you have to think hey, is learning the are learning the new key binding is actually worth it. So I have found that it has been. I personally use emacs with them key bindings. But in the end, due to how extensible all the text editors are now, even though like, they all start with like sort of around the same features, then they pretty much all end up almost the same. So it's honestly all just a matter of preference. So yeah, that's it all. Thank you.